The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller. Or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder. As you saw in the last video, the brightness of an LED can be controlled by changing the value of a current limiting resistor placed in series with it. But what if you want to change the brightness of an LED in real time, without having to change the resistor? The Arduino can't actually change the voltage it outputs to its digital pins. It can only output 5 volts or 0 volts. To get around this limitation, we can use pulse width modulation as a way to simulate the effect of a changing voltage. In this video, I'll show you how to use pulse width modulation to control the brightness of an LED to dim it up and down automatically. You'll learn how pulse width modulation works, what duty cycles are, and how to use the analog write function. You'll also learn how to increase and decrease values automatically in your code. A pulse width modulation signal is made up of short, high frequency pulses of current. The signal looks like a square wave with the voltage switching from 5 volts to 0 volts very quickly. On the Arduino, the pulse width modulation frequency is around 500 Hz, so there are 500 of these cycles output each second. The duration of each cycle is only about 2 milliseconds. When we send this voltage to an LED, the switching happens so fast we don't even notice it. It just looks like a constant voltage. The duration of the high part of the signal is called the pulse width. The length of the high and low parts of the signal is called the cycle duration. The percentage of the pulse width duration to the cycle duration is called the duty cycle. With the duty cycle of 100%, the pulse width is on for the whole cycle and the output is 5 volts. With a duty cycle of 75%, the pulse width is on for 75% of the cycle, and the apparent voltage is 75% of 5 volts, or 3.75 volts. With a duty cycle of 50%, the pulse width is on for 50% of the cycle, so the apparent voltage is 50% of 5 volts, which is 2.5 volts. With a duty cycle of 25%, the pulse width is on for 25% of the cycle, so the apparent voltage is 1.25 volts. And with a duty cycle of 0%, the pulse width is off for the whole cycle, so the output is 0 volts. By changing the duty cycle, you can change the apparent voltage to any value between 0 and 5 volts. Pulse width modulation doesn't work with every pin. Only the pins that have a squiggly line next to them can output PWM signals. These are digital pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11 on the Arduino Uno. To generate a pulse width modulation signal, we use the analog write function. Analog write needs two arguments. Remember how the digital write function needs the pin number we want to send the signal to? Well, the analog write function needs that too. With digital write, we also had to tell it to send a high or a low signal, which we did by writing input or output here. But with analog write, 
instead of writing input or output, you give it a number between 0 and 255. This number represents the duty cycle of the pulse width modulation signal. A PWM output of 0 volts corresponds to a 0% duty cycle, so the analog write value would be 0. A PWM output of 1.25 volts corresponds to a 25% duty cycle, and 25% of 255 is 64, so the analog write value would be 64. A PWM output of 2.5 volts has a duty cycle of 50%, and 50% of 255 is 127, so the analog write value would be 127. A PWM output of 3.75 volts has a duty cycle of 75%, and 75% of 255 is 191, so the analog write value would be 191. And a 5 volt PWM output corresponds to a 100% duty cycle, so the analog write value would be 255. To find the analog write value that will provide a specific voltage, you can use this formula. Divide your desired voltage by 5, then multiply the result by 255. The circuit to control an LED with PWM is simple. All you need is your Arduino, an LED, and a current limiting resistor. Anything from 220 ohms to 1 kilo ohm will work fine. Here I've connected the anode of a yellow LED to a current limiting resistor. The other side of the resistor is connected to pin 6 of the Arduino. And the cathode of the LED is connected to ground. We're going to make this LED fade up and down from off to full brightness like this. Let's see what the sketch looks like. In the video on controlling LEDs, we use variables to store the pin numbers. I've done that in this sketch too. I have a variable called LED pin, and it's set equal to pin 6, the pin the LED is connected to. We're going to be cycling through the full range of analog write values from 0 to 255. So we'll need another variable to store that value, which I'll call brightness and set it equal to zero for now. We also want to control how quickly the LED fades on and off. One way to do that is to change how many steps we take between zero and 255. So I've declared a variable called fade amount and set it equal to five. In the setup section, we have to use the pin mode function to set the LED pin as an output. In the loop function, We have the analog write function to write the PWM signal. The LED variable is set equal to 6, so the analog write function will write to digital pin 6. We also declared a variable called brightness. If you just want a static PWM signal that doesn't change, you can use a number between 0 and 255 here. But since we want the PWM signal to change, we're going to use the brightness variable. The first time through the loop, brightness will be zero, since that's what we set it equal to when we declared it at the top of the program. The next line is brightness equals brightness plus fade amount. What this does is take that brightness variable and adds the fade amount value each time it goes through the loop. We declared fade amount equal to five. So this will make the brightness variable increase by five each time through the loop. Now we get to an if statement. If this is your first time seeing an if statement, don't worry. I'm going to go into a lot more detail later on about what if statements do and how to use them. But for now, just know that when the stuff inside these parentheses is true, the code inside these curly braces will be executed. If the stuff inside the parentheses is false, the program skips over the code inside the braces and goes on with the next line of code below the if statement. Inside the parentheses here, we have a condition. An if statement is a conditional statement. It does something based on whether or not the condition inside the parentheses is true. 
We'll go more in depth in a later video, but for now, just know that this means less than or equal to. And this means greater than or equal to. And this is the logical operator for OR. So this line is saying, if the brightness variable is less than or equal to zero, or the brightness value is greater than or equal to 255, enter this block of code and execute it. If it's not, skip the code down here and go to the next line. So let's get a look at how this all works together. The first time through the loop, the brightness variable is set equal to zero. Okay, fine. So we write a PWM signal of zero to pin six and the LED is off. Now we get to this line, which says add five to the brightness. So brightness is now five. Then we get to this line where we're asked, is brightness less than or equal to zero or greater than or equal to 255? No, it's not, it's five. So we skip the code in the if statement and go to the first line after the if statement, which is a delay of 30 milliseconds. After that, the program returns back to the top of the loop section. The brightness value is still five. So the analog write function writes the PWM value of five to the LED. Then we come back to this line that says add fade amount to the brightness value. Fade amount is now five, so five gets added to five. So the brightness value is now 10. The if statement checks if 10 is less than or equal to zero or greater than or equal to 255, which it's not. So this code gets skipped again. After that, it loops back up to the top and loops over and over adding five to the brightness value each time. But eventually, the brightness value reaches 255. At that point, the Arduino gets to the if statement and says yes, 255 is greater than or equal to 255, so it enters the if statement. Now it sees fade amount equals minus fade amount. This changes the fade amount from five to negative five. Then it exits the if statement delays for 30 milliseconds, and writes a PWM value of 255. Now it reaches the statement brightness equals brightness plus fade amount. Fade amount is now minus five. So five gets subtracted from 255 and brightness is now 250. The sketch keeps looping, subtracting five from the brightness with every loop until brightness reaches zero. Since zero is less than or equal to zero, it executes the code in the if statement. Since fade amount is still negative, minus negative five equals positive five, so the fade amount value returns to positive five. Now five gets added to the brightness each time through the loop. This makes the brightness value cycle up and down from zero to 255, which makes the LED fade on and off over and over. You can also play around with the values in the if statement to change the range of the LED's brightness. In the next video, we're gonna learn about potentiometers. SunFounder is my go-to source for sensors, modules, and other parts for the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. They have a huge selection of STEM, robotics, and IoT kits and lots of useful sensors and modules. Every product has an online tutorial with wiring diagrams and example code. They also offer free shipping on all orders with no minimum. Give them a try at www.sunfounder.com next time you need to order some parts.